We move on to the round of 16 ties. We have three confirmed. LME, let's start with you for this one. I'm just looking at the three confirmed, right? Switzerland against Italy, Germany against Denmark, and France against Belgium. You know what? It's not a great tie for Germany. It's not a great tie for France. And it's not a great tie for Italy because you could see one of the so-called underdogs in those ties maybe pulling the upset. So therefore, which of the three is most likely to beat the favoured opponents, LME? Italy, because I think that they can play 89 minutes of garbage and get away with a victory. And I think they can do it more than once. Uh, and I think any Italian fan will be in agreement with me here. I mean, Switzerland are, are a very good team and they've always they've shown it. I think they're well equipped to come away with something here. But they are a team as well that get frustrated. Uh, and I think that Italy can be a team that can frustrate. And without any specific example of Italian might that I've, I've seen at Euros, aside from that great clinical last gasp goal to make it here in the first place, I think that they're the kind of team that can maybe do something if they just do the classic Italian way of just waiting for things to happen and then take advantage of the chaos, which is exactly what happened. So I think that one would be key. I think Germany has probably learned its lessons from the group stages and they will be revamped by the home crowd and the home support uh, as well as Denmark has done to get to this place. But they haven't really shown me anything to say that they can go really far. Uh, and, and, you know, in terms of France and Belgium, even though I haven't been uh, completely, uh, you know, amazed by what France has done so far, they're still much better than Belgium. And again, they have shown that they are champions and they will be fine against this Belgian team that we have, you know, battered more than uh, Che Adams's minutes. Is, is Switzerland, is Switzerland or Italy <laughs> the favourites in this? And, and listen, it, I know Italy, Switzerland... Oh, Italy would be favourites. That's, that's, that that, that's the point. That's what I'm thinking. So where, where, where's the, you know, which one is the, is the upset? Switzerland winning is, is the upset over, over yeah. Italy? That, 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 is, yeah, that would be the upset. didn't understand the question, I think. You got the answer yeah. uh, the other around. No, I, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't get... I, I just thought... I actually thought in, if Italy is the favourite in that matchup, yeah. then I'm confused. Yeah. <laughs> who, well, Jules, who knocked France out? For uh, well, it's three three years ago. Who knocked France out? Uh, not uh, three years ago. I'm. I was Switzerland. on holidays. <laughs> <laughs> I was not at Euros. I think three years ago. I'm not sure. Didn't we? Didn't win it. We didn't go to the final. We always go to finals. Were you, no. Were you at the winery? Were you at the German? Winery? <laughs> yeah, in Lexington <laughs> with my kids. Yeah. I, mean, I don't remember much. I drank too much. I think. Someone knocked no, you. Right, yeah. The Swiss. Uh, and we saw, I was at the Switzerland Germany, Germany Switzerland game, and I was really impressed by what they did collectively as a, as a unit, the way they defended, the way they just nullified completely all of Germany's threat from Musiala to Vert to Havers to Gundawan to Cruz to really impressive. The weakness for Switzerland, outside of the fact that they do really well against the big teams, and you're right, Shaka, to mention that they beat France two years ago in the last 16, despite being 3-1 down with just 10 minutes to go and they didn't give up and they kept going and they scored those two leg goals and then waited for the pens and defended and then gone, gone through on the pens. Maybe the little, the only thing is the um, who, where the goals are going to come from because we saw against Germany, Dan Endor took that goal really well, but he also missed one big chance. Vargas was also stupid not to time his run better for his own goal. So... I'm not really sure if they've got that one clinical striker that can also help them going through those tougher games like Italy and then maybe potentially after that facing England mm -hmm. in the quarterfinals. That's where maybe the limit is. is if they had a better number nine, who is a real number nine, because neither Mbolo, Dua, Okafor, Vargas and Endor, none of them really are this clinical, just pure number nine in the box that just has that eye for goal, etc., etc. They don't. They all, all are more of a kind of a mix of a wide player and a second striker almost. So that could just be the limit. But certainly, I think their performance against Germany would bring them a lot of confidence going into this Italy game. Well, stick with you for France against Belgium. And, and look, if France play well, France win, right? So yeah. Belgium have got to play their best and they've got to stop France from playing. So the way that they've played right now, they started with a back four in that game I was at against Slovakia. They've kind of gone to a three as well with Vertonghen coming back from injury. And they've kind of gone with two wide to support Lukaku. I'm not convinced that's the tactics or that's the formation that will have a chance against Belgium. So what do you think they should do, Jules, 
um, to have a chance, the Belgians against France? It's a good question. I'm not sure I'm in all on board with this kind of formation that you mentioned. It's a bit hybrid because Castain is the right wing back, which is it's fine with him. He can be a right back and be a right wing back. Then on the other side, you've got Doku, you know, with Teat or Faiz, whoever is the third centre back alongside uh, with, you know, with Vertonghen and... Well, teat has been playing on the left. Faiz has been yeah. playing on the right-hand side. If exactly. you could kill Mbappe against yeah. both fast, I mean, that's... that's that's Absolutely. You're hearing the tortoise. That ain't happening. Yeah, and it's a bit won- it could be a bit wonky as well because yeah. you expect then Doku to be on that left hand side and mm-hmm. Castain, but then you have to. I think it's, a, it's kind of a difficult formation to play in. Really, you need a lot yeah. of understanding and communication to be a three, to be a four. It's much easier at club level, and we see this kind of formation at club level far more than at international level. And again, we neither of us trust really Tedesco with these tactics anyway. So they will have to be perfect. They will have to have a great goalkeeper because this French team misses chances. So if your goalkeeper is on fire like Skropupski with, with Poland yesterday, then you have a chance. And then in midfield, I think Tillemans and Onana, whoever plays there, will have to be really solid against N'Golo Kante and Rabio and Chouameni or whoever, whatever the combination for France is. But Deschamps also needs to get his act together because what we saw yesterday, tactically, in terms of his own team selection, the starting eleven plus then the Serbs, that was that was an absolute shambles from Deschamps. And he's not usually that kind of guy. Usually, he's pretty. I've got my idea. I, this is what he's good at. And yesterday, it was an absolute mess. So mm-hmm. let's hope that between now and this game against uh, the Belgian in on July first in Dusseldorf, that he would have sorted things out and get it right tactically. 